Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today's topic is analog to digital conversion and specifically we will focus on sampling. The course title is AAA 351 352 Analog Flash Principles of Communication System. I am Dr. Zishan Kaleem from CUIUA campus. Let's begin the lecture. Okay, let's move begin the lecture contents. In this video we will cover analog to digital conversion and the specifically we will focus on the sampling issue and for analog to digital conversion there is there are three main steps first is the sampling and the second one is the quantization and the third one is the encoding so in this video we will only focus on sampling so let's move on sampling so sampling is the first step in converting a continuous signal to a digital signal for example if we have a continuous signal like a sine wave and we would like to convert into a digital signal so first we need to take the samples right like this one we need to take the samples so these are the samples so the important point here is that to take the samples we have a sampling frequency so what should be the uh, exact sampling frequency so that this the sample version of the means that after doing sampling and converting into digital when we need to convert back into the analog then it should be recovered fully recovered so there is a, some rule that what should be the sampling frequency so sampling theorem determines the minimum number of samples needed to reconstruct perfectly the continuous signal again from its samples as i mentioned that there should be a number of minimum number of samples that should be taken to reconstruct it, the signal again from the sample so there is a sampling theorem which clearly mentioned that what can be the sampling criteria so a continuous function xt for example this is xt for example this one with band, band limited to the v hertz because this is time domain signal if we make it in the frequency domain then in frequency domain it should be a band limited like of course there will be some band of this signal bandwidth of a signal so we for example the signal bandwidth is b hertz can be reconstructed from a sample so if we uh, do the sampling of this continuous function and then it can be completely uh, reconstructed from the sample if it was sampled at a rate equal or greater than the 2b samples per second so according to the maximum frequency or the maximum bandwidth if we mm, mm, sample our sampling frequency is twice of that bandwidth uh, then uh, by taking the twice of the bandwidth of a uh, rate 2b samples per second so if the sampling rate equals to 2b then it is called a Nyquist rate so if Nyquist rate is satisfied, then it means that the signal will be fully recovered. Okay, for example, we have a message signal G of T here, it is a time domain signal, and if we convert into a frequency domain, then it may look like as this signal G of F and we plotted both of the uh, axis like in omega and the frequency so in frequency there is a maximum bandwidth b and in omega domain it is 2 pi b right similarly minus b here so we need to take the samples of this signal so to generate the samples we use the impulse function right for the uh, ideal case we have an impulse and these impulses are uh, uh, have a gap in the with the ts second right and this as you know that the sampling frequency is the reciprocal of the time so sampling frequency should be 1 over ts so we generated the number of samples but by uh, taking care of the sampling time or the sampling frequency so according to the nyquist as we studied just before uh, in the previous slide that the nyquist rate should be met so f s should be equal to 2b or greater than 2b so this should be a criteria of taking the sample so by taking this by fulfilling this criteria we just uh, have number of samples here 
so when we multiply these samples with this signal right so in output it will look like this one right so there will be because when you multiply one with any value for example because you know that the impulse their amplitude is a constant value which is one here right one so one into uh, for example this uh, we one into this part so we will get this point here right this one Similarly, for other parts, so in this way we take the uh, samples out of the this signal, message signal. So we uh, try to represent in the frequency domain. Uh, previously, we only have a one signal, but in frequency domain, due to this number of impulses, we have number of uh, copies of the same message signal. So one is at the center and the other is far away from the center, right? For example, if fs should be greater than 2b this is our sampling frequency if it is not greater than 2b then they will overlap right this will be something like this and this will result in aliasing so this condition should be met like fs should be greater or equal to 2b right here we this is the example of showing fs is greater than 2b because b is here then 2b will be here right so fs should be greater than Oh, sorry, 2B will be here. Like this is FS, right? FS should be greater than 2B. So, if we didn't cons uh, follow this uh, criteria, then it will overlap and results in LIC. Okay, let's uh, uh, go into the further details of the sampling theorem with mathematical analysis. For example, uh, for the impulse function, if we will write mathematically, because you know that the number of impulses in the previous slide there were n number of pulses right this one and this one so we can write mathematically them in this way delta t minus nts because nts is a sampling time so for n is equal to 1 t minus nts is equal to uh, t minus ts so at we have a first sample at that uh, after the sampling time ts and we have a second sample after two, two times of the sampling time two tiers and so on so this is the mathematical representation of this impulse function and after multiplying the signal with the impulse so we have a amplitude of a signal uh, and the uh, position will be the same as the impulse right as I told you this one so this one is the mathematical representation of this shape so shape of uh, following the shape of the message signal and the position this is the position right this is amplitude it means the shape and the position means t minus t this point on the time axis right this point so this is mathematical so if uh, we want uh, we convert this into the Fourier domain so to convert into the Fourier domain we can uh, we already studied as this impulse can be written into the exponential form in this way this is one of the example in previous chapters so you can look at this how we can convert this into the uh, exponential form so if we write this into the exponential form and then multiply again with the message signal so the same message will look like 1 over ts n minus infinity to infinity gt ej and omega sts so if we convert into the frequency domain so using the frequency shifting property we already studied to find the spectrum of the sample signal so we have uh, g of f and minus f so this this equation represents actually this figure so this is the mathematical representation uh, we have a spectrum by the spacing for f is equal n is equal to 1 so f minus fs right this one and uh, n is equal to f minus 2 fs this one and the so on for this one is the n is equal to 0 so f at f we have a one spectrum okay this the previous slide we discussed the transmitter part now we are discussing the receiver part it's so reconstruction using uniform samples as you notice that uh, we need to reconstruct them uh, digital signal back into the analog signal 
So, so to reconstruct the continuous signal from the samples, because now we have a samples and we want to reconstruct the continuous signal GT, we pass the samples through a low pass filter with the cut of frequency we heard. If you uh, go, uh, try to uh, follow this figure, so this center frequency, right, this part is our transmitted signal, but uh, after transmission or multiplying by uh, doing sampling, we have a number of copies, but at the receiver side, we only need this part, right? So it means that we need a low pass filter, which has a, which is tuned to a P hertz frequency. And after passing this complete signal to the, that filter, for example, that filter, low pass filter, we will get GT. So it means that we will get the uh, output signal, which is, uh, exactly similar as the transmitter signal. So for the low pass transfer function, because this is the uh, frequency domain, we call it a transfer function. So transfer function of the low pass filter is Ts pi omega by 4 pi b r is equal to Ts, right, in frequency domain, is rectangular function, right. So rho pi f omega is 2 pi f, right? So 2 pi, 2 pi, so over, overall there will be f over 2b, right? This will be the equation in the f domain, right? This is the, in the uh, omega domain and this is the uh, or f domain. So this transfer function represents the low pass filter, right? This is the low pass filter transfer function. And if we convert into the uh, time domain signal, so by taking inverse Fourier transform, we will get the same function, right? So you, how we get, we already did some examples before. This is rectangle function, right? So low pass filter usually look like this one, right? This is V and this is minus V, right? So if we take the in, uh, uh, inverse Fourier transform, we know that the inverse Fourier transform of the rectangle function is a sync function, right? So this is a mathematical representation of the time domain signal to be ES sync 2 pi BT. For details, you can refer the previous examples. And this is the mathematical representation of this rectangular function, right? So sampling at the Nyquist rate, uh, you know that 2 B T S equals to 1. Why 2 by T S is equal to 1? Because sampling frequency, uh, sampling time is the 1 over F S and Fs should be twice of the bandwidth, right? For example, this is 2 BTS, right? So sampling frequency is, or the sampling time, you know that is 1 over Fs. So if you put the value of S, S according to the Nyquist sampling criteria, it should be 2B, minimum 2B, right? So 2B and then put this one here, so 2b, 2b will cancel out, we have a 1, right? So ht is equal to sync 2 pi bt. So gt equals to t uh, and ts, this one. Uh, so when we pass to the uh, transfer function, low pass filter, because this one was the trans, uh, transmitted pulse, and when we pass it to the uh, low pass filter, it will look like gkts. Uh, because we convert into the K sample in time domain, right? And S T minus K T S and then G K T S where the impulse function here is the sync function as I mentioned ago, just before now. So G K T S sync 2 pi B T minus K T S because there is a number of samples because for each uh, pulse, because this is for one pulse, right? We have a sync. So for number of pulses, we have a number of T minus KTS number of sync functions, overlapping sync functions. So this is the representation of the reconstruction of the uh, using some uniform sample. Okay, reconstruction using uh, uniform samples. Uh, this is a pictorial view. GT, GKTS, right, sync 2 pi B T minus K, interpolation formula. So one sample look like this one. This is our frequency domain. And when we convert into time domain, we have this one, right? So 
this is the reconstructed signal in the plotted dark and there are for each sample if you clearly notice the dotted lines here there are a number of sync functions right but they will cancel out at the point when uh, n is equal to 1 2 3 because uh, according to the sampling criteria so gt is equal to sample estimation gkts sync 2 pi bt minus k pi so this one we reconstruct the main signal using this sample so this was the receiver side processing there are some practical challenges which we need to consider while doing sampling. So sampling at the Nyquist rate requires the ideal low pass filter, which is unrealizable in practice. Why? Uh, if you look at this, f is equal to f s is equal to two b. So it means that there should be exact cutoff here, right? This point, exact cutoff. So if we need an exact rectangular pulse here, rectangular uh, function here to uh, separate the B signal, transmitted B signal from here. But this is not practically possible. So um, there should be a condition that FS should be greater than 2B. So practical signals are time limited by nature, which means that they cannot be frequency limited at the same time. This results in aliasing. So if we just uh, consider this one, so this may result in aliasing. So to overcome this, we usually consider sampling frequency greater than twice of the bandwidth. This is a practical sampling condition. So there, if you consider FS is greater than 2B, then there will be a, some transition band and this empty place, right? So in this way, there will be no overlap and the filter can just follow the practical shape, right? This one. And this is more like a practical shape and this is, we need the exact cutoff at the time our frequency is equal to zero. So it will generate the infinite number of frequency content. So this must be remembered. Uh, there is uh, one important criteria, maximum information rate. This must be remembered because uh, the Nyquist say that a maximum of 2B independent pieces of information per second can be transmitted or error free over a nice less channel of bandwidth B. So this is the maximum rate like 2B if the bandwidth is B, then you can transmit the maximum of 2B information per second without any error over a nice less channel. So this condition should be remembered because in future we will use this condition for maximum information rate. So this should be remembered because we need that condition for future use. Thank you for listening and for question and the session, there will be a separate online discussion session. The exact time and date will be communicated later on. Thank you very much.